Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special little episode of Next Week Now. Uh, joining me, as always, is Jayfish. Hello, Jayfish. Hello, folks. Now, Next Week Now is your number one source for the hot new... Well, not so much news, but, like, the hot new, like things to play and all that stuff for the curiosity format if you're wondering what the curiosity format is it is a 40 card for constructed format uh designed to mimic um the limited of the most recent standard legal set in this case march the machines now we already did a huge set review for march of the machines but starting week three of curiosity we will be adding Aftermath into the format. So Aftermath cards will be legal. So we're going to do our set review for March of the Machine Aftermath. Uh, for more information on Curiosity, just check the descriptions below. We won't go too much into that. Um, for the reviews, uh, like, and our scoring, let's just go over that really quickly. Um, I won't go into too much detail. You can check out more in our original set review video for March of the Machines. Uh, fives are cards that will be banned, or we think will be banned. Uh, fours we give to cards that are staples of the format or are like things that push their archetype into extreme relevance uh threes are your good cards they aren't like automatic includes but they perform well in the decks they're in and you're not unhappy to see those cards by any means uh sideboard staples are also included in the three slot um twos are for the cards that might possibly see like some play maybe they'll be like a one of or something um but they they won't be like amazing by any means but you know there's always a chance uh also your sideboard like non-staples like the kind of cards you'll play in your sideboard for like the just very specific matchups as like a one of but it's not like you, you're like oh i'm in these colors i should be playing this in my sideboard um no they're just your can be played in the sideboard cards and then your ones are the cards that uh we don't think we'll see any play which there will be a lot of ones for this set because march of the machine aftermath kind of feels like a set designed for commander wouldn't you agree, Jayfish? Yeah, this is a, this is a, e even with the smaller size, definitely the lowest scoring set we were we we're probably ever gonna do for this video. Because like, even if they do another aftermath type set, I I it cannot be this bad. This yeah. set is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a lot of criticism going uh, among all kinds of different communities for this set just because it looks bad. <laughs> so yeah, but let's get started and we'll get started with one of the cards that actually is not that bad. Uh, Coppercoat Vanguard. Um, Coppercoat Vanguard. Um, humans are not quite a supported tribe, however the knight's deck does play pretty much all humans the only exceptions are going to be the knight tokens and then preening champion um but other than that putting copper coat vanguard in will basically be giving you like a teferi album <laughs> so which is you know the that's not terrible by any means. It's actually pretty solid. Uh, two mana lord is not bad at all. Um, in fact, it just probably is one of the decent uncommon considerations for the deck, so I'm willing to give it a three. I'm going to go with a two myself. This just doesn't seem all that impressive in a really bomb-heavy format. Um, I would like to mention, though, that there's kind of a green-white humans deck, but there's like one green human, so probably just play this in knights. Right. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, if that card, which three for me, two from you, is going to be one of our better cards, well, <laughs> that says something. Uh, next is Deification. Do not play this card. It does nothing unless you have one of your other rares and mythics out, and even then it's not good. Uh, terrible one. Uh, moving uh, on. Like, Jfish is also just going to give this a one, so. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I wasn't even going to say anything. Like, if we had an uncommon Planeswalker, it'd be nice, but they, they gave us desparked walkers instead in the set. Somebody pointed out, like, if the, if the walkers were flip walkers that went from planeswalkers into creatures, that would have been really cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember yeah, I could definitely that. I could definitely that. But yeah. Uh, next, we got a uh, Harness Snub Horn. Um, you know, uh, artifacts and enchantments are not really a big theme in March of the Machine. The best you can get from this is City on Fire, which, you know. We we gave that card a one in our set review, so the harness snap horn just does not fit. Would have been great in Brothers War, but uh... well, I mean, this card does have some points going to it. I'm gonna avoid saying it's a dinosaur, which is a, is a supported tribal theme, as you all know. Um, but there is um urn of God's fire, I think, to get back with this. Yeah, but that requires you to play Urn of Godfire in your deck. Yeah, but I've seen a few Luris decks doing it, but that, that's really the thing. Like, this is just a worse Luris as we, as we have it right now, so I don't think this will see any play. One star as well. Yep. Okay, next we got a Metropolis Reformer. How about this one, Jfish? Three mana, two free, flying vigilance, you have hexproof. That's a, that's a lot of keywords. And whenever it's dealt damage, you gain that much life, so... Probably, like, gain for you could say. Uh, it's... It, it's... Something. It's not terrible. But it also is pretty terrible for rare when this format has way too many bombs. Um, there's... Uh, I mentioned it with the green-white humans deck. There's also kind of a green-white angels deck. Green, white, blue angels, but there's one low rarity angel, so you can't do anything with it, actually. So, one star. Yeah, this feels like... I think this one is actually, like, a constructed playable card, like, to bring in against, like, burn and stuff, but not for curiosity by any means. So, yeah, it's a one. Um, Next, we got a spark rupture. Um... There are not enough Planeswalkers being played to make this ever viable. Easy one star. Okay. Um, <laughs> next we got a Tazri Stalwart Survivor, which uh, you should actually read this one. Read this one. Yeah, last minute change to the schedule. Um, free mana, free, free. Okay, stat line. Human, okay, tribe. Uh, each creature you control is tap, add one mana of any of this creature's colors. Spend this mana only to activate an ability of a creature. Activate only if this creature has another activated ability. Oh boy, that's that's a lot of text. And you can pay Wooburg to mill five cards and put all creature cards with activated abilities that aren't mana abilities from among the milled cards into your hand. Um, I recently brought a Mardu reanimator list to a top free finish in a weekly tournament, and I think this might be a decent alternative rare, but nothing too impressive. I'm going to give it two stars. Yeah, but that requires you not to play Garuda. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not playing Garuda, wouldn't you rather be playing like Breach the Multiverse or Invasion of Tolvada or one of the Praetors? Well, let's be real. Uh, it, Breach of the Multiverse is getting banned before Guy Ruda does. I mean, Gigan. Gigan. His name is Gigan. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, probably, but still, I don't think Tazri is going to ever see any play. That's way too much restrictions. Um, and yeah, the activated ability thing. The funny thing is, it's kind of a non bow with the main activated ability in the set, which is transform, because you transform into something that doesn't have an activated ability. Uh, it gets a one. Uh, it gets a one from me. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got 
filter out. Uh, one and two blue return all non-creature, non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Um, so there's not a ton of non-creature, non-land permanents. We're about to see a really good one. But the main thing is um, battles. This picks up battles, which you don't really want to do unless you're the one who has the battles. And battles are only at uncommon and above, so you're running into some rarity restrictions with that. But I think this might see some fringe play in blue decks to board wipe incubate tokens before they've transformed. So I'm going to give it an optimistic two. Yeah, I don't find there's much opportunity to be able to wipe the incubate tokens. Or at least, like, not too many of them. Like, sure, maybe Glissa, because Glissa just turns out, like, a huge ton of them. But, you know, then you still have Glissa left to deal with. Uh, I don't see Filter Out seeing any play. I give it a 1. Hmm. Next, we got Tolarian Contempt. The one you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, Tolarian Contempt. 5 mana. ETBs put a rejection counter on all creatures your opponent controls, and at the beginning of your end step for each opponent, use up to one target creature they control with a rejection counter on it. And that creature's owner can either choose to put it on the top or bottom of their library. This, um, I've only seen it once in draft, but when I did see it, it was really insane. And I think it's going to really have some of that playability and curiosity. We're really this is a really board-based format. Like, you gotta have stuff on board, and this really just clears away everything as an uncommon, and that's pretty nice. So I'm gonna give it two stars. Yeah, it's a bit expensive and slow, but, you know, if you're able to stall out for long enough, this can really start to hurt your opponent. Um, and... I also think, like, because it's an enter the battlefield thing, like, you can also bring it in with, like, a Yorian deck. And, like, blinking this with Yorian is, and, like, refreshing all the rejection counters on all your opponent's stuff to, you know, kind of slow wrath them again. That's certainly something. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's playable, I think. I'll, I'll give it a two. All right, next up, the honestly, the, the card that people were most happy to see out of this set, uh, Training Rounds, finally reprinted. Is it good? No. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. um, next, we got uh, one, by the way, for Training Grounds. Uh, next, we got the Suvin Drifter. Um, the thing is that you don't get any Enter the Battlefield ability with it. So it really limits the amount of things that are good to flip off this. Plus, you know, the whole thing that, like, it sometimes it just doesn't flip a creature and the card does nothing except for be a 2-4 flyer. Um, but it also takes, like, a bit of work to get, like, something that's better than just a 2-4 flyer. Um, so... Yeah, the soup and drifter, it's way too luck re luck reliant for it to be useful, so I give it a one. Yep, one for me as well. And that is it for the blue cards, because who knows how Watsy decided to do what cards or what colors in the set. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> Next we got right. uh... Yeah, we got Yara's Oathsworn. Little, little little night man. Uh, not blue white though, huh? I think it's so, a that really hurt the ability. Uh it very well could be. I don't know, I can't see the art clear enough. Uh two two menace, decent. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one uh if it has fewer than four plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And if it has exactly four plus one plus one counters on it, search your library for a card and put it into your hand. That's a pretty decent effect. But there's also some stuff holding this back. Um, two, two. It doesn't say... Sorry? It's a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that exactly. Like It's an early enough threat that being a 2-2, two, two, it could get bigger before they have a chance to block it. 
I mean, it does die to the premium removal spells at two mana, though. That does hurt it. But, um, it, it doesn't say player or battle randomly, even though, like, everything else that cares about hitting a player says player or battle in this set. So, okay. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a one star. Yeah, it will die before you can get to four counters. Plus, I mean, if you are getting to search your library for a card, well, unfortunately, you only have one other rare slash mythic to choose from because this takes up your rare slash mythic slot. Um, I thought you were playing it in Gigan. Doesn't matter, though. Gigan's not in... You can't search for it. True. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's an easy one. Now it's the best card of the set. Let's go. It's a uh, blot out. Um, three mana instant speed removal spell. Always good. Exile. Highly relevant in this format. This format is very graveyard centric. Uh, we it's been a while since we had a graveyard centric format. Last one was uh, Dominaria United, where. You know, it's important to be able to permanently deal with a thing um, in such a way that they can't get it back from the graveyard because of things like Luris or Unsealed and Necropolis. Or... <laughs> so, Blonde Out does that. And speaking of Luris, this instantly kills Luris because Luris is always going to be the highest mana value creature that your opponent is going to be playing in their deck if they're companioning Lurus. Um, so Blot Out just does a great job of permanently dealing with that, and it's just a strong enough removal spell even outside of that. I mean, it's basically a strictly better uh, Soul Shatter, which, you know, was a standard playable card back when it was back during uh, Zendikar Rising. So... Blown out, best card in Aftermath, four stars. Yep, four stars. We're going to see a lot of this, even after Loris probably inevitably gets banned. Yeah. And more insane black removal. Uh, next, we got Death Rattle Oni. Um, cool artwork. Cool artwork. Uh, and good, cool artwork. Good? Yeah, I think it's decent. It's a 7 mana 5 4, not great. It's got Flash. But it costs two less for each creature that died this turn, and when it ETBs destroy all other creatures that were dealt damage this turn. I could definitely see this being like a uh, a surprise finisher in like a, a go-wide black strategy. Like earlier today, I played against someone who was doing a black-red Convoke. And I think this would be a great fit into their deck, so I'm going to give it two stars. I'm only going to go with one. These kind of I don't know the official term. I'm going to go with Assassin because it's the kind of effect we usually see on Assassins. These kind of Assassin effects where you destroy something that was dealt damage. They're kind of difficult to set up, especially since we do have open deck lists, so your opponent knows you're playing Death Rattle and Oni. So it's very hard to set up a situation where you can really get your opponent. Um... So, uh, I don't know. These kinds of effects haven't historically been very good, so I'll only give it a one. I do love the artwork, though. So, uh, okay. Right. Then that moves us on to the next card, Markov Baron. A free mana 2-2 two -two Vampire Lord. Um, with Convoke, so, you know, this could, in some situations, be a two-mana Lord. But uh, the big problem is there's, like, two Three vampires in this set, counting this. So, one star. Yep. Um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy one star. Uh, next, we got Herbwork Scavengers. Um, we mentioned Graveyard Hate being like an actual thing, and this does a decent enough job of that. And it becomes a pretty sizable threat in doing so as well. Um, getting an additional plus one, plus one counter every time, and um, also getting keywords. There's a lot of keywords in the set. 
on things. Uh, and we have like all the backup stuff. There's a lot of vigilance going around. Pretty, should be pretty easy to get like flying on this thing or menace. Yeah, it, I mean, it kind of dies to removal, but if it doesn't, then it can kind of be strong. I think I might be a bit too optimistic going with a three here. It's probably closer to a two, but I'll go with a three. Yeah, I'm going with a two. I'm, I'm not that optimistic about this. And I would like to say I'm not too sure on this, but I remember the other day seeing a Reddit post that this yes, card was a little bit bugged. bugged. So be careful if you choose to play it. Yep. Okay, next we got uh, Arnie Metalbrow. Uh, this any good? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not even. I'm not even reading off what this one does, guys. You're on your own for this. It it it's way too situational. One yeah, star. At, at best, it saves you like what one mana, two mana. <laughs> I'm not doing the math. That's but you're, you're you're big on the um haste creature is, is is that a proper term for this i don't i know later on you're gonna like one of the car one of the rares for it yeah this doesn't go in that deck <laughs> this this is like situational will save you on mana slightly um so yeah this this is an easy one uh speaking of easy ones uh we got uh colgan warmonger actually you're not giving are you I'm not giving this one a one, no. I think it's got too much going for it to say a one. Um, two two uh, free mana, two generic, one red, free two haste. We mentioned there's going to be some haste synergies later on. And whenever it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library, and you may reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. Um, I think I think it might see a little bit of play, so I've chosen to give it a two. But how? Oh, well, I mean, like, there were dragons. Yeah, not very there. good ones. That's all That's all it needs. You, you've seen my tribal ratings, all right? If, if there's something that it can lose... If there was an Ogre Lord, you know this card would be like a furry. Maybe a four. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give it a one. Uh, dragons are not what you want to be playing in this format. <laughs> I do hope this means that we will be going to Tarkir sometime next year, though. Anyways. Here's hoping. Next, we got a uh, Plarg and Nasari. We still don't know how exactly Nasari is no longer completed, but whatever. Um, yeah, uh, aside from the lore thing, uh, how's the card? I like it, but it's really not that good. Um... This card won't see any play, I'd say, because like we're 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 not too late into the season, but like it's Holly's seen zero play, and if a if a red card that casts stuff from the top of the deck is gonna see play, it's gonna be a Tali. That said, I don't know. I just I just kind of like its energy, so I've get, I've chosen to give it a two. If it was end step, I could definitely see it getting a two, but. It's uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, which means that your opponent's got a whole turn to remove it. And, you know, also they get to choose what you're grabbing off of this, which, sure, you're still getting, you're still getting card advantage, but it's not, it's not particularly very good card advantage. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, I give it a one. Uh, speaking of ones, it's, uh, Reckless Handling, uh, don't play Tutors, and Curiosity, especially a really bad tutor like this one, you're not gonna be grabbing an artifact, and the fact that you might lose the artifact is even worse, um, easy one. But what if this was Dom, and I grabbed the Wall Tutor with this? That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, and then you discard a uh, wing mantle chaplain. <laughs> so, uh, next is Animus Might. Um, Animus Might might be the strongest card we've given a one two. <laughs> um, it's a fine card on its own, 
the problem with it is is that it's a sorcery speed bite and we've got an instant speed bite at the same rarity and the same mana cost and granted with more green commitment but like that's not a big deal um plus uh, more resiliency against uh, removal with tandem takedown so <laughs> we don't need animus might it's just outclassed by tandem takedown or just you know playing cosmic hunger at common so as i said it it's a it's a strong card but it gets a one in this format yeah um also green just isn't seeing a ton of play right now so it's hard to give another fight spell more than a one then i'll play it next week <laughs> well not this card but I'll, I'll play some green next week Anyways, next up, more green, Leyline Immersion. Um, free and one green, Enchant Legendary Creature. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> Nissa, Resurgent Animus. Wait, wait, we need to give her the grade. It's uh, one. <laughs> it says Enchant Legendary Creature. I think I've done my job. Even if it didn't say that, it would be a one. <laughs> it's atrocious. Yes. Yeah, th th this is terrible. I can't believe I'm going to spend like 8 billion gems buying this as an alternative art. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, uh, Nissa. Uh, as you were saying. Yeah, Research Anima. She's like a, she's like Lotus Cobra, but uh, what's the other thing she does? So this is the second time this is resolved uh, this turn. Oh, that's Little never going to happen. Uh, what about... Uh... It's literally what is it like? Literally just bow for Zendikar. Um, or no, there's of Zendikar? Um, no, there's that um four mana instant, put plus one plus one counter. Two okay, plus one, plus so one, yes, one. it is basically invasion of Zendikar because that card's atrocious. <laughs> yeah, um, so this is not great. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess there's there's another card coming up, but like if you're doing that. That's pretty terrible. Okay, that's like the worst card in the set. And in fact, why we say this is a commander set for the next card, but well, is there yeah. really no other way to put two lands onto the field in in the same turn? There Not for sure. are, but it, they tend like, for example, Cosmic Rebirth can do it if a land is in your graveyard. Um, but you don't want to be getting back a land usually with that card. Um, there are ways, but it's just not even enough of a payoff. It's like, oh, an elf or an elemental? Okay. This isn't really an elf slash elemental format. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not good in this format. She's a one. All right, then let's continue on with another Nissa card. Yeah, uh, Open the Way is why we say this is a commander card, because there's only going to be two players in the game, so you're only getting two lands, so this is worse than Invasion of the card, and it's a rare. So, this is atrocious, it's a one. I totally agree, and for folks keeping track at home, that is four Nissa cards, and they all got one, so <laughs> is this the worst thing to ever happen to Nissa? Probably. I don't know. What about her racism? <laughs> eh. <laughs> I, I was gonna say the War of the Spark storyline's up there, but like... <laughs> she didn't oh yeah, that that's one of the worst things that happened to Nissa as well. Man, this, Nissa... <laughs> Not doing so hot. Uh, at least she has a girlfriend now. <laughs> yes, they are. They are back. I think. I don't know. I'm not a big lore guy. Yeah, they're, they're officially a thing. Although they broke, they basically broke up Quatli and Sahili, which is the better couple because both of them seem to be desparked. So screw them. Anyway, and by them I mean wizards. Screw wizards for breaking up Dinobots. Speaking of dinos. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, tranquil fillback. Uh, yeah, tranquil fillback. Uh, dinosaur. Dinosaur tribal. <laughs> no. Um, if you're not playing black, you but you're playing green, 
you might need to put this in the sideboard for some of the matchups. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be particularly amazing because it is a rare, but I'll give it a 2 because of that. This is a very great Gear Centric format. So, yeah. 2 for Tranquil Fillback. I know you're not as high on that. Yeah, I'm just giving this a 1. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm not sideboarding this as a rare. I'll just like I'll I'll just splash black if, if I need graveyard removal. Uh yes, yeah, splash double black for Timurit. <laughs> Good plan, Jayfish. Um also this card is very emblematic of what is wrong with aftermath, which is it's not even an exciting set from a lore perspective. Like going into the set I was thinking like, oh this is gonna be a set with like all like really like good like heavy lore based cards this is just a dinosaur what the i hell got in really in uh, i gotta give a little plug to uh dino diego i believe his youtube channel is i've really got it into watching his videos as i as i go to sleep <laughs> love me some dinosaur lore now okay next we got under city upheaval yeah, so uh, Undergrowth is back. Uh, one and two green uh, does a whole bunch of counters based on the number of creatures in your graveyard. I don't remember what we gave Storm the Sea Core, but I think it was probably a one, so I'm going to give this a two. This feels worse. It's worse immediately, but like in the later game, it's going to be a bigger push. So, I think, I think it's it also too much a victim of the fact that graveyard strategies are good, so Timurat's going to be good, which will hurt this card. <laughs> so, I I think it's too much of a victim of that. Uh, it would be it. I would normally give it a two, but because of the way the format's been shaping up, I'm going to give it a one. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite planeswalkers. Why? He's uh, an air crawl. I I just liked him. I just liked his card in a uh, Pharaoh's Beyond Death, and we never saw him as a planeswalker again. So thanks, Walker. <laughs> R- really, really. Fir- first Dovin Bond, who at least got a planeswalker deck card. Like I can at least play two Dovin Bonds, but Calix, just one, just one planeswalker. But but at least his card is cool. Not great, but cool. Uh, free mana two two has constellation, uh, puts a plus one plus one counter on something. Probably always him. And whenever he or an enchanted creature, which you're never going to deal damage with an enchanted creature this format, do not play animus, whatever that card was. Um, you get to create a token copy of a non legendary enchantment, which there are some really good ones. There were those um. Is there a term for them, like the the Phyrexian Incubate enchantments? If there's not, we need we need we need to call them uh, the Incumments. There we go. No, but okay. <laughs> yeah, those are solid. A seal from existence is in your colors, but realistically, how often are you going to be able to connect with Calyx? Yeah, not often enough. But, uh, I'm giving him a furry just because I, I like its energy, but it's not going to really see that much play. No, this is, this is a one. Uh, heavy enchantment deck is not going to be a thing, and connecting with Calyx is going to be surprisingly hard. Like, at his base, he is a 3-3 three, three that dies easily enough to removal, and a 3-3 three, three, not very easy to connect with, so it's a one. <sighs> Next is Campus Renovation, again, another card that it would have been cool if it was around in Brothers War, but this is not the set for artifacts and enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield, so it gets a 1. Yeah, I wish this had been in the um, the original Strict save, but I feel like, I feel like that would have been cool there. But yeah, there just aren't artifacts or enchantments this set, really. One star. Yeah, again, it's basically City on Fire, which is not a good enough card. Uh, we mentioned Cosmic Rebirth, and it's one of the stronger cards in the set. Uh, tell us about Cosmic Rebirth. 
Uh, free mana. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard. If its mana value is free or less, put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put it onto the battlefield, put it into your hand and you gain free life. Um, so the big thing this can do is green-white Luris decks. It revives Luris for you. And we have seen some people experimenting with green-white Luris builds. But uh, the future of those is kind of up in the air right now. So I'm going to give this... Furry, because even once Loris has gone on, like, it's not just card. the anime or something is still pretty good. So, yeah, I think Furry. Yeah, I mean, it gets a decent value. It's a good anti-aggro card. I don't know how relevant that's going to be. This format seems a bit more on the controlly side. Um, and, yeah, getting a regrowth effect at instant speed, it's, it's definitely seen some play before this card reminds me a bit of a pulse of marasa um which you know pulse of marasa was quite a solid card back in the day by which i mean two years ago i don't know <laughs> when it last got reprinted pulse of marasa was that i, I think was... that was when i started playing and that was like least least five years ago probably more so originally it was printed in oath of the gate watch as a common but then it's been reprinted at uncommon rarity but i i'm thinking the last time it was reprinted was m21 but i'm not sure on that front but still okay uh, next card <laughs> sorry were you saying something no no go ahead Next card, Danifa, New Finale is Light, uh, three mana tutu, keyword soup, and you may cast an aura or equipment spell from your graveyard. We're going to see aura slash equipment payoffs later, but they're not going to be in green white, and this could have literally been two mana, and it would still see no play. Moving on, one star. Yeah, how are you getting equipment into your graveyard? <laughs> uh, one star. Uh, Feast of the Victorious Dead, how about this one? I like this one. This one seems cool. Uh, simple two-man enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if one or more creatures die this turn, you gain that much life and distribute that many counters among creatures you control. I like it. I, I think that you could really go wide with this in certain strategies. So I'm going to give it two stars. I don't know how many creatures you're intending on having die each turn, but, like, that's just a slaughter. Um, yeah, I, I think this requires way too much commitment in order to make this even slightly playable. And just slightly. Um, I, I'll give this a one. <laughs> I am not high on this, especially since it is your end step. Um, so you can't do like have the deaths be on your opponent's turn. Um, okay, next is uh, the card that I was talking about that broke up Dinobots. It's a Gold Forge Thopterex. Um, I give it a one based solely off the fact that they're apart, and the fact it's like not a really relevant card. You're not going to have too many legendary permanents out in white blue. You're playing a uh, the knights deck um like you're not going to be playing a deck that wants a two mana one three flyer like the flying life linker so yeah it's a one so yeah it's a one yeah one as well you might play it in lower strategies but like war two isn't that big of a hurdle to get over so using your uncommon slot on it kind of questionable yep uh next is uh jarena she gets a First stand Speaking of uh, card. things you uh, play in uh, lower strategies, uh, two mana two two. When it ETBs, exile target player's graveyard, sacrifice it, humans you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. It's very solid to me. I'm surprised you're as low as you are on it. I think I'm gonna give it a free. Uh, why? It, it it's a good Loris counter. That's probably good enough for me. All, gra all graveyard counters, to be honest. But it's a rare. It is a rare. But it's good. You gave Frill back a, a 2, and it's a lot worse. I did, her. but I gave it a 2 because it can be played in colors that, aren't, oh. that don't have access to Timoret. 
And this is in white black, which has access to Timurat. So I don't see why you would ever play this. You might uh, not be that heavy black. Timurat does take a lot of devotion to start going. A lot of, a lot of black sources to start going. Why is there a green and blue card in the middle of this? Uh, it's not sorted based on its uh, alphabetical order. Why am I just now noticing this? This is kind of all over the place. We just talked about a white-black card. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Jorina is any good. I don't think you're going to want her as your Luris counter. I think you'd rather devote those sideboard slots to um, Timurat, where sure, it's maybe not as good as hating on Loras. But also, you still get access to a rare slash mythic. So, again, if this was an uncommon, I, I would probably be with you on like a three. But it's not an uncommon. It is a rare mythic. That is a huge cost to be paying to play this card. So it gets a one. Uh, next is Jorael, uh, Voice of Zalfir. Um... Green blue has actually been more impressive than I than I gave it credit for in the initial set review. In fact, it's made it back into my like planned rotation that I'll be playing this season. Um, Joriel, she ain't bad. Um, she can. She's basically a turn five player, not a turn four play, but she can start creating a. Decent sized flyers that draw you cards. So, you know, I'm going to say that's like amazing, but it's not too shabby. It, it's enough to warrant a two, I think. If it goes unchecked for a turn, it replaces itself. So I'll go with a two as well. Okay. Um. Next, we got. Um, I know, why'd they spoil this card saying it was the least spoilery card when it's actually the most spoilery card in the set? I'm not a lore guy. I couldn't tell you. But, uh, could you tell me why, why this card is so terrible? Um, I don't know. It's a commander card. Even then, like... Yeah, you don't you want really to want to exile two legendary creatures from your graveyard to draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the greatest value among cards exiled this way? That is so situational for four mana. But oh, legendary spells you cost cost uh, cost one less to cast for each card exiled with this. That's that's a whole two man. That's a soul ring. Yeah, I oh, think boy. that's the main thing you would play, and the reason you would play it in Commander, like in a Radadrabic. Is that how you pronounce his name? You you know who I'm talking about, right? The yeah. Abzan guy? No, no, the guy, the white black guy who reanimates your legendaries that die. Oh, uh, the, the Skelly Man. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you play that in, like, that kind of list in Commander, but also this isn't Commander we're talking about. This is Curiosity. This gets a one. Um, speaking of Commander cards, it is Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep. <laughs> so many Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents to choose from. Isn't there just one? Isn't it just Tidal Terror? There's... Where 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 my Phyrexian snake Watsy? Um, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, sh you shouldn't you like this guy? It uh, gets that guy. guy it, you can uh, get it with Gyruda. Oh wait, no, and it's it, from I, your hand. I do, not, I do not know Gigan's creature type. To be honest, it is. A demon a it's a demon kraken, uh, but it has to be yeah. from your. Oh wait, wait! You do cast from your hand. It's not like old companion, so never mind. But... Yeah, let's uh, let's 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 bl bring back companions. It was it was a perfectly balanced mechanic. Hey, in limited, it was actually very fun as was. Like for every other format, it was like overwhelmingly broken. But in Ikoria limited, 
It was a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, one for Kiora. Let's go on to Nahiri. Yeah, speaking of things that might be broken, affinity for equipment. And there are some super solid equipments this set. Uh, six mana, so this won't be coming down that quick. And you still have to pay those equip costs. But whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, they go to the top card of your library, and you may cast that card this turn. That's a... Uh... That's something. That's an anticipate. Uh, anticipate? No. No. Uh, Impulse. Impulse. And you may cast equipment spells this way without paying their mana costs. Yay, I get one mana just, free. <laughs> just finally enough to make equipment a deck? Maybe. Or find out. It's definitely not the worst card we've seen. Two stars. Yeah, I mean, we talked about in our original set review, like, the red-white equipments list with, like, Rayab and stuff. We actually got to saw somebody play the red-white's equipment deck this week. I think they got 2-1 with it, so. Yeah, I also saw a red-black kind of equipment list, so. But yeah, N Nahiri, it's probably not going to get there, but I'll give it a 2. Live the dream, people. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, a uh, Nahiri card that I think we might be underestimating, Nahiri's Resolve. Five um, mana enchantment that doesn't immediately have an impact, but um, it kind of does. Creatures you control have plus one plus zero in haste, and at the beginning of your instep, exile any number of non-token artifact and or creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next uh, upkeep. So... You're, again, you're you're the one who likes the haste deck. What do you think about this? No, if you're playing this, you're playing it for the mass blink, which having seen a bit of Na the Nahir in the Boros blink deck in standard, it makes me think Nahiri's Resolve might be better than I initially thought. Originally, I gave it a one, but like within the past, like couple of hours i bumped it up to a two so i'll give it a two all right i'm gonna give it a two as well that blinking is pretty cool had a really really epic game where i won by milling the person out eventually <laughs> next we got narset enlightened exile again another card that makes me hope we go back to tarkir um yeah, so, um, I mean, the obvious thing to do here is to do um, No Green Monk Tribal and play um, Streets of New uh, Invasion of New Capenna. But um, even, even on its own, even if you don't have Invasion of New Capenna flipped, uh, this is pretty decent. Uh, when it attacks, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a grave. Okay, so this is both graves, so... This is the immediate and the uh, the sword, and you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost. If this goes unchecked, it's gonna be really cool, but it's probably gonna die way more often than it goes unchecked. Two stars. Yeah, exactly. Yes, if it if you can survive with it, it does stuff, but it you requires a full it. turn cycle in order to do stuff with it. So. Yeah. Yep. We don't have those boots to let it attack directly and cast four extra turn spells from the top of our deck. <laughs> yes, not quite as oppressive as original Narset. Uh, but yeah, I'll give this Narset a two. Uh, oh, I see you've gone down on this one. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I made a little oopsie. You um, thought it was without paying mana cost, did you? I thought it was without paying its mana cost. And I was like, it, uh, that won't be great, but that's like that's got to be good. But uh, no, you you have to pay the cost, um, and you also have to exile the card, so you can't really do any loop. So this is pretty bad. But um, did you know that there's a, a three thousand gold sleeve you can buy in the shop with uh, an alternative art of this card? <sighs> no. Okay. So what are you going to give it now that you've realized? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna stick with the two that I've changed it to already. <laughs> yeah, originally Jayfish had this as a four, and I was wondering what the hell he was thinking. <laughs> but this was, cannot but hit either. 
I thought we were doing like an either player's graveyard theme this set. Well, let's see what's going on. Why is it so all over the place with stuff? <laughs> Why does that one knight only care about hitting hitting players? What what was the the, the design team doing? <laughs> Yeah, it is a bit all over the place. Anyways, Nashi gets a one. You're not going to play it. Um, speaking of ones, it's Niv Mizzet Supreme. It literally gives flashback to two cards in the set, both from Aftermath. The campus uh, re re renovation, re restoration, I already forgot because it's a one. And then uh, Cosmic small, Rebirth. Small, small correction here. It gives Jumpstart, an even worse mechanic. Did I say flashback? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I meant to say jumpstart. Um, but yeah, it li literally gives it two cards. So basically, you're pe you're playing five color for, I guess, a hex proof for monocolor flyer. No. Yeah. 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 Um, also, the, the to the guy who I played in draft the other day who had um four colors on the field by turn four. Um, I think he unsealed, it, which is how I knew he had a Nimizix, and then uh, missed a land drop on turn five, only to play a mountain on turn six. R r rip you, buddy. <laughs> that 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 has nothing to do with this. So let's move on. Yep, uh, Nimizix a one. Um, I love Nick's list, Captive Kingpin. Stat wise, it's actually like not terrible. Uh, four mana, four three flyer trampler can actually do quite a decent bit of damage. Um, it's also squarely in the colors that would be playing Dreg, uh, Dreg Mangler, which it makes it pretty easy to make each opponent lose exactly one life. And when you do that, like you know, you make it bigger, and then you get the card you sacrifice back. Um, it, I don't know, man. It dies to spite, so I don't think it will see any play. Also, the one life is too hard to trigger. Yeah, it is basically Drag Mangler. Um, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying I could put it at a two. <laughs> just I'm gonna purely based on like being a four power four mana flyer. But yeah. <laughs> Listen, may maybe it's just a matter of the rest of the cards being so trash that I'm willing to give anything. <laughs> like it's it's like the com like the original Kamigawa set um effect where it's like this card's on curve stats. Like this is one of the best cards in the set. It's a three mana three three. Oh, it's instantly a bomb. <laughs> okay, next we got a PNLR console of revival. Um. Is Thopter one of your tribes? <laughs> Thopter is unfortunately not a tribe supported by whatever that dinosaur is. Also, this is a human, so that wouldn't even work anyways. But uh, whenever you play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, create a Thopter is not terrible. I mean, we have uh, we have that one impulse draw card. Yeah, but... So you could get a few guys, but... Uh, it relies I don't know. on you to have other cards for your rare to be any like playable. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm I'm only gonna give it a one. Yep, it's a one, and that's too much of an ask. Uh, you don't want your Are rares you to require this? other things. Are you playing this in your haste deck? Well, we're, 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 there's not that much haste, dude. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. You can give things haste with Trailblazing Historian. <laughs> you can. You can do that. Plus, it, it it's not like I'm going to I would do like a full haste deck anyway. So I'll talk about it when we get to Samet. Uh, next is rebuild the city, which you know, three, three threes, with vigilance and menace is a decent set of stats. Um, you're in green, so you're playing like an invasion of Zendikar, so it shouldn't be too hard to get the mana for. But still, it's like there's a lot of big bombs to ramp into in the set. Or rebuild the city is uh, quite a bit below like some of the other stuff that we got going on here. So I I'll, I'll give it a two. Yeah, decent stats for the cost. Uh, let me ask you a question though. Do you think you um 
will usually target a gain land with this, or will you go with an untapped basic? I think usually you want the blockers initially. Um, granted, if it's a matter of um, your opponent not really have anything else on the board, or you've built up enough of a board state, you can block anyways. Like you could like gain an extra three life, but if I think you want the blockers usually. Okay. Speaking of free life, that kind of fits in with our next card, Roko Street. Sh uh, three mana, two four. Uh, Naya. At the beginning of your end step, each player exiles the top card of their library until next end step. Each player may play that may play the card exile this. Jfish. Oh no! Hold on. Let's pause the video. Hello, sorry, technical difficulties. Uh, Jfish, what were you talking about with Rocco? Yes. So, whenever a player plays a land from exile or casts a spell from exile, you may put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. Food tokens, for anyone not aware, are artifacts with pay two and tap them to sacrifice this artifact and gain free life. You're pretty good against burn strategies sometimes. That said, this card is not amazing. I'm going to give it one star. You might want to play it with PNLR, though. Probably not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a one. You don't want to really help out your opponent. Um, sure, you get more benefit from it, but... Look, if you play this on turn three against my uh, Mardu Reanimator deck, I'm probably never casting a spell from Exile. <laughs> Which means I don't get as many uh, counters or food, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, always a downside somehow. Yeah, this is more of a group high commander card, so it gets a one. Uh, ooh, it's Samut. Uh, yeah, here's the, the card that I thought you liked more. I, I don't know why I'm doing this one exactly, but, uh, three mana, two free. First strike, vigilance, haste, keyword, soup. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, can't, can't deal damage to a battle, though. Uh, who knows? Uh, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn, draw a card. That is kind of sick. Um, yeah. We we talked about this all over the place. Uh, play it with Trailbreeze, uh, Historian. But it's also just a good card on its own. And the three mana, two three, first strike, vigilance, haste that draws you a card. Yeah, it it's decent. Yeah, and if it draws you any more cards outside of that, which you know it seems decently likely, you're you're in red. You're 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 going to be playing hasty things. Even even aside from trailblazing historian, maybe like you bring in the furnace toast charger as an example. Um, you have that as your top end in the list, and you drop that down, or like I don't know, your rather rare is rampaging raptor. Um, um. I, I can never remember with these types of cards. If uh, you deal damage with more than one hasty creature, you get additional draws with this, right? Yes. yes. This is not just uh, one or more hasty creatures. This is any hasty creature, or, well, any creature that enters the battlefield that turn deals damage, you get the card. So. Okay. We. So, yeah. Usually it's only going to be one thing, right? How many hasty creatures are you playing in a turn, right? But Well, if you're playing that one terrible battle we talked about, at least two. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> but again, this this can't hit that terrible battle, so... Uh, I don't know. The fact that a lot of these triggers don't count battles when in the main set they count battles, it upsets me. Still, I think Samut is a strong enough card. I'm probably being a bit too optimistic. It's probably more like a three, but I'll, I'll, it's aftermath. I I want to give something else besides blot out a four, so I'll give this a four. I'm just following your lead on this one. I'll go four as well. No, uh, 
hey, look, it's another card that did, like maybe is a sign that we're going to go to Tarkir next year because there's not really much dragon support currently in standard. Uh, don't play this. Even if there was a dedicated dragons deck, I don't think you would play this anyways. So Sarkron gets a one. Yep. I'll ruin the timeline. Moving on. Okay. Next we got a Sigarda Font of Blessings. You mentioned before, green doesn't really have much in the way of humans, so you're mainly basing this off white. I'm not really sure green-white humans is exactly where you want to go, but it's a four mana, four for flyer, that gives all your other stuff hexproof. Sure, they're going to kill your four for flyer <laughs> instead of any of your other stuff. You're not going to have any other stuff on board that's better than this, but... Uh, yeah, it's not atrocious by any means. Uh, I'd be willing to give this a two. If this was in an actual Innistrad set, this would be one of the strongest raiders of the entire thing. Oh yeah, no doubt about that. But yeah, for Mom, it's just a two. Yep. Okay, next we have a Tyvar the Bellicose. Very uncommon word. Um... But, uh, I there's Tyvar like, there's... died. Oh, sorry, what was that? Sorry, I was just gonna say, I thought Tyvar died. I'm only just now noticing this. I, I do not keep up with the lore, folks. No, he died, uh, fought a glorious battle against a perhaps coma, but who knows? The story wasn't quite clear on that front. Um, but Tyvar's cool. Um, the card itself, not so much. Um, you're not going to be playing elves, and there's like, what, one mana dork? It's kind of cool with Kami of Whispered Hopes. Kami of Whispered Hopes get a soul, like, whenever you tap this for mana, double this card's power, and also get a plus one, plus one counter on top of that, so it's like devil's plus one itself, which can kind of get pretty <laughs> big. But... Uh, Honestly, talking into it, that might make me want to give it a two, but no, no, I'll, I'll control myself. It's a one. Yeah, it's good with Kami and, like, nothing else. Easy one. Okay, which brings us to Karn. Legacy Reforged, and just like the original Legacy, he's not very good. <laughs> what is it? Uh, right, yeah. So corn, uh, there, there's there's no artifact deck. Like we've talked about it before. I guess maybe you play him with Hornus Snubhorn, Sunhorn <laughs> Snubhorn. But uh, yeah, he's terrible. There's no Golem synergy. It's one star. Yeah, and which brings us to our final card. It's a rare land. Um, don't play rare lands unless they're like something insane. Like say like the AFR man lands or like the original man lands like your classic celestial colonnade this is not that um don't play it it's a one should this be legendary because it's a city <laughs> yeah how many how many dranets have they got there on Ikoria? <laughs> Maybe it's just like a really big city like I've said I'm not a lore guy maybe there there's so much city that like you know, just like a fourth of it's in ruins. I don't know. And this does remind me a bit of some uh, Bow for Zendikar lands, which really should have been legendary but weren't. But yeah, anyways. Yeah, there were just uh, four molten pinnacles, so it, it, it just happens, you know? Ge <laughs> geography. Wait, isn't Valakut actually legendary, though? <laughs> I don't think that one's legendary. Amiria is not legendary, is it? I don't. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, that brings us to the end of the set review. Aftermath is not going to do much to shake up the format. It's mainly blob out. Anyways, anything else to say, Jay Fisher? Ready to get into the song? Um, confirmation: the the Zendikar lands, Valica, Amiri, other ones that did not see any play are not legendary. Um, but yeah, let's hop right into it. <laughs> Baba. Next week now. 
me now. Okay. See y'all later, everybody. We'll have an actual, like, next week, official, like, more traditional next week now sometime. Anyways, bye. See you next time, folks.